good afternoon. My name is Rita Montgomery, and we are sitting here in uh, the inn at 213 17 Mile Drive in Pacific Grove, California. And uh, I have the pleasure of uh, having an interview with Dr. Hugh Lin. And present with me also is Rick Moss, Dr. Rick Moss, and Marvin Greeno. We have some questions. I have some questions of Dr. Hugh Lin. Uh, please tell me, how do I pronounce your first name? Is it Heliakala? Is that right? It's E A L E A K A L A. Thank you. So, I'm wanting to speak with you, especially about some of the ideas that you bring up in the book Zero Limits, written about you by Joe Vitale, and. Perhaps you could start out by explaining a little bit about this idea of 100% responsibility for uh, oneself and uh, a, an entirely different idea of what the self is according to the system that you uh, speak about. Well, I think Shakespeare said it better than I. Um, if you read Sonnet 146, um, Shakespeare says, poor soul. And, and so Shakespeare is saying the basic idea is that there are tragedies in our lives because we don't take a look at where the, where the origin of the problem is, and it's always in self. So the tragedy being in life is that we're clueless and we repeat the same thing over and over and over again. And so um, when I work at, Hawaii, for example, when I worked at Hawaii State Hospital, the um, working with people, kill, rape, and murder people. I had to ask the question, what is going on in me that I ex I'm experiencing this? I'm experiencing a, a patient being violent, I'm experiencing um, staff going crazy, I mean, uh, that sort of stuff. And uh, so having to take 100% responsibility for that. What's going on in me that I'm creating this experience? And so I just do this cleaning and the cleaning the Ho'oponopono is about going into the self and specifically into the subconscious and where the data is and since everything is run by information so the information in my subconscious is saying is dictating to me what I'm seeing, what I'm experiencing it's like in Shakespeare's Tempest where oh, Miranda says oh woe is me to see what I see, see so Miranda has this insight that she's only seeing with data and so, and so it is with me, and so it is with all of you. And so I just work on the data in me that I, that I experience as, quotes the other person. So if I see you as being crazy and goofy, it's only my experience of you. If I erase that, you can't be that way. Not possible. And so that's what I mean to be 100% responsible. Being 100% responsible is taking responsibility for what is going on in you that you experience of whatever. Could I ask you to clarify just a, a little point? You said, what is it in me that is experiencing yeah. this? Yeah. Could you clarify what you mean by experiencing? Do you mean perception? Do you no, I don't even mean that. I'm not, I, the perception, perception is not, perception is really a end product or consequence of data playing in the subconscious. So again, coming back to Miranda, Miranda is saying, I only can see what I see, because the data is seeing what I see. So Miranda is is really speaking what Shakespeare says, the mind is but is just a stage, and the data runs around on the stage, and the data is really um, what is going on, and so if the data is such that I'm, say, I'm making, I'm experiencing, I'm suffering, or I'm experiencing people being goofy, then I have to be responsible for that what's going on in me, and it's simply data playing, and more specifically, memories we're playing in the subconscious. And those can be erased. Mm -hmm. I think that is probably the most profound thing about uh, this whole Ho'oponopono, is that you could erase data. Could you give us an example of what it feels like or looks like for data to be erased, or is that not something that can be done in this kind of setting? I'm, I'm not sure what you're asking. Could you give us an example of cleaning? I mean, how do we erase the data within our own minds? Well, is that something that could be 
Yeah, just of course. Um, it's, it, you can teach it. Trees can do it. Cars can do it. Anybody can do it. Uh, but the idea is the most fundamental question one needs to know is the question, who am I? And most people have no idea about who they are and therefore are not uh, allow um, the data in them to speak for them as opposed to choosing to not have the data by erasing it. And so um, it's coming back to great sages like Jesus. Jesus said, love your enemies. And your only enemy is the memory plane that you experience as a judgment, anger, resentment, hate, annoyance. And so the whole point is about falling in love with the data and saying to the anger, I love it. Saying to the memory that replaced the anger, I love you, thank you for showing up and giving you one more chance to free you. And so the whole point upon it is just simply saying, I love you, thank you. When the data is erased, what is the self that remains? Is it um, a unique self that is God created? Is it individuated or is it just pure self? So, so let, let me come back at you. So I, I would ask you, who's talking? Who's asking the question? Well, that would be the data, and yeah. because the, the other yeah. part of me would know the answer to that. Yeah, but I'm saying, since the data is talking, you can erase the data. So I'm saying to people, it, no matter if you have questions, you'll never be able to get at what is going on, because the data is running you, and the idea is to get to, uh, see, um, we historically have come from this notion that you can decode things. So the Greeks come along and Greek said, well, let's examine, let's analyze. But the Ho'oponopono is not about examining or analyzing. Ho'oponopono is about letting go of the data. So when the data is erased, you are what Buddha called in the space of void, or what Shakespeare calls you're in the state of, of blank. And it is when you are in that state of emptiness, void, and blank, then this inspiration comes through. What quantum physics called the phantom force of nothing. So it's a state of nothingness? I'm sorry? I'm sorry, it's a state of nothingness that you're but describing? You have to really be careful because um, one has to be as precise as possible. No thought? Uh, no, no not, not no thought, no data plan. So, so what does that mean to have no data free? That means you're free. You're, you're absolutely free with no data place. And when you and it's only at freedom, or, or you, I'll use another word, clarity. Clarity is defined as no data playing. No data meaning no memory replaying in the subconscious that one experiences. So let's say you get it, you get the mind back to zero. It's what Jesus called the stone or the foundation. And only on that foundation then can you build something. And then out of that foundation comes the inspiration. And so you are moved by perfect information as opposed to being in dead, then using dead information. But most of the time we're dead. We, 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 without realizing we're stuck in old data and we're dead. And the whole Ho'oponopono is about releasing the, the death and the debt. So we, we basically have a mortgage in our souls and we don't even know that. And we, we, because we're not conscious of it or not even aware of it, we're stuck in it and we, we're just going to suffer. And, and it doesn't have to be so. But you can, you can erase the data back to zero. And at, back, at zero, out of nothing comes this phantom force of inspiration. New data, there, brand new. There's so much of um, our operating in the world that depends upon language and thought. So when only, you only if you say so. Okay. So you're, in other words, now we're stuck in that data. Because you have, you have said something that's just a story, and the data is telling you what to say, and you're stuck. And that means if you're stuck, I'm stuck. Okay. So Let me try to phrase it another way. You cannot phrase it another way. There's no other way you can phrase that. If you're in zero, let me try it another time. <laughs> can, can you be in zero state and have language? Well, you, you're going to be in zero state and have perfect, you're going to say whatever is perfect and, and right. And everything, in other words, let's say you're at zero, that means the whole world, the whole cosmos becomes zero. That means everything gets enlightened. 
So they, so he gets enlightened, the chair gets enlightened. But they don't get enlightened from, from me. They get enlightened directly from the source. And so then the language is perfect. And it's, it's a language in which you're not even aware as to what the, what the artists call inspiration. Like Alston, Van Gogh, or um, these great artists just do it. Well, how did you do it? I don't know. I just did it. Yeah. That's the language of love and art. Truth, beauty beyond comprehension. Yeah. If one if one takes responsibility for everything and everyone. Everything that's going on in that person, yes. Then the idea of free will, that each has a will to choose or a decision or to choose for themselves how they want to grow, change, heal. Yeah. That would not be a point that you would recognize, is that correct? Well, it depends on, again, we have to be really precise, so I'm going to come back and ask you. Please. So, when you say free will, what does that mean? To me, it means the right to choose against what is natural, the right to hold on to one's programming, the right to, uh, to um, separate oneself and one mind from source. See, what happens is that, that at any given moment, 11 million bits of information is playing, for which you are unconscious of. Yes. So it's driving you. So you don't have free will, but you have choice. The choice is, like Shakespeare is saying, to be or not to be free of the data. Mm -hmm. You have that choice, but the data is going to run you. The only question is, what data is going to run you? Is it going to be inspiration or is it going to be memory, which is dead stuff? Mm -hmm. So that's the choice, but you don't, one doesn't have free will. Um, can I can I approach the yeah. question differently because it's not yeah let's talk about the people at Hawaii State Hospital yeah. by changing yourself you you change them because they are part of yourself has the language correct well I think I think what happens is like with you before before I I, I came here I got the address, so I did the cleaning on the address. Um, I did the cleaning on this camera, and on your camera, because I don't know what he took before, and that will interfere with yes. what's going on now. And, and so I'm taking 100% responsibility because peace begins with me. So yes. if I show up and I'm not peaceful, you can't be peaceful yourself. And so I'm only here because only for one purpose, and that is to make a man as well. Whatever. For whatever. Yeah, and I don't know what the what, what that whatever is consciously, but there are parts of me that know what that is, and so my job is just to begin the, the being 100% responsible by doing the cleaning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't know what's getting cleaned up. I'm clueless. Um, when uh, I get the impression that you uh, make many of your decisions of your actions based upon uh, petitioning divinity to make a choice a, a, as to to act in one way or in, to act in another way, is that right? Uh, again, we're going to have to be really precise now. Okay. I, I do the cleaning, that's my job to get back to zero. I want to be free. Okay. That's the, uh, my only purpose for being on this planet is I got garbage, and uh, which is mortgage on my soul. And I want to let go of the garbage so I can be free. And so, at freedom, the information comes from the source. Yes. But yes. I won't even know it. I, I won't. I can't say, "Oh, I got the information." That's not my job. My job is just to keep cleaning nonstop and let it let it unfold, however it's going to unfold. Because 11 million inspirations coming in, I'm I'm not even not even aware of that. So what is cleaning like? Can you describe what your cleaning process is? Yeah, cleaning is only saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me for whatever data is going on in me that I need to make amends for. Yeah. And so if someone calls you up like me yeah. and says, would you come and speak with us? Yeah. So then what do you do? I clean. 
And and then what happens? Well, if, if I clean enough, then we go, oh, okay, it's okay to do it, and I do it. Oh, okay. If I clean and I don't get to do it, I won't do it. And there are many interviewers on which I have not done because I don't get to do it, and I'm not making that decision. It's the intimation in me that's making the decision, and not you, me. How do you know that? I don't know that. No, I mean, how do you know to come? I don't know that. I just do it, and then it says go, and then I tell him it's okay. But I don't, it isn't like a process where you go, oh, I got it. It's something that has to be worked on and cleaned on, and, and like a rose, it just begins to unfold, and at some point, you, I just, because I've been doing this for, I don't know, almost three decades, it just, I have it. Sorry. Can I ask a yeah, question please, to that yeah. point? Mm -hmm. Do you believe it's possible, some people believe they can ask a question and get a yes or no answer? There's psychokinesiology, there's uh, the use of pendulums, things of that nature that allow one to perceive that they're receiving an answer. Do you, do you believe that that's well, possible? Well, but I, I, I want to come back at you again. Please. Um, for me, the only way, the only way, that, the reason I, I'm here is for the, only for the purpose of cleaning. Okay, that's, I'm clear about that. And so, um, the cleaning, the purpose of the cleaning is is to free up the data. So I don't know exactly what you're talking about. If I were, if I were to use a pendulum, I would make sure that I would be data free, and then and then I would ask. Yeah. But but the pendulum, if you're if you're not if you're not at zero, you'll get funny answers. You know, based upon your own scripts and your and get, ideas. Uh, and I like that. But based, on, I would be more precise based on memories, data in a computer bank. Yeah. And so how would you suggest that people begin the enterprise of, of cleaning? I, I don't I'm, even do that. I just do the cleaning myself and if people want to learn it, they show up. <laughs> yeah, like you. You're yeah. right, yeah. yeah so well, I... I for, for example, in, in years ago I had somebody say to me, convince me that I should take this class. And I said to him, we don't do any marketing. I don't do any of that sort of stuff. I mean. It's a decision, a choice that you have to make on your own. I'm not here to make any money. But if I was here to make money, I'm in the wrong business. Yeah. I've been doing marketing for you up uh, and down the coast. I <laughs> Just because yeah. I, I knew it was such a wonderful opportunity yeah. for people to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm still trying to wrap my mind around what the cleaning process is like on an experiential level? Well, again, you have data. A data may, ex may uh, I may experience the data as I don't like you. Okay, let's say that sure. data says, under my, my, in my mind, I'm going, oh my God, and I have to put up with this bullshit stuff. Right. Blah, 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 and I go, oh, I get to clean with that. Right. What's going on in me? Right. And I didn't know I had it. Right. So I can say to that data in me, I love you. Thank you for giving me one more chance to let you go so that I can be free. Right. So the Ho'oponopono is about, about saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me. And then the, the I'm sorry, please forgive me can be said in a different way. I love you. Thank you. Blueberries, M&M's, or the whole kit in the boodle. Yeah. But the notion is that that it's my responsibility, totally. So I have nothing to do with you. Right. Yeah. And so you're talking to not the person, but to I'm the, talking to myself. Yourself. Yeah. I'm, my, I'm a spe specifically I'm talking to this inner child in me, who who is suffering because I'm holding on. So the Ho'oponopono is you're asking questions, but it's an engagement process. You, like you say, you're trying to wrap yourself around it. The whole point is about letting go. Right. It's just let go, boom, the data goes, and all of a sudden you get inspiration to do something you never, it never came up for you to do. Right. Yeah. In the uh, introduction to Zero Limits, Joe Vitale talks about programs that go back to the beginning of existence. Yeah. Could you talk a little more about that? Yeah. When, when uh, coming back again to Shakespeare and, um, 
when we were initially created at the beginning, we were nothing, blank, no data, perfect in every way. Didn't have to think, didn't have to make money, didn't have to do any of this sort of stuff. So no data playing. And then out of that, out of that no data, which is what, what Buddha called uh, void, up comes this, what Buddha called enlightenment, which is the, the source of the light. And then that source of the light decided, and I don't know why and how come, I'm, I, and I'm not interested, decided to create each one of us and created each one of us infinitely zero. So that's how we began. And so what does it mean to be infinitely zero? It means we experience heaven on earth, nirvana, art, beauty, love, until something come, came along um, and it, it brought darkness. Are you in that state of bliss, nirvana? <laughs> if I was in that state, I would not be here oh. sitting with you guys. <laughs> I'm here because I have stuff to, to let go. But clearly you've had a considerable degree of success uh, based upon your having emptied a psychiatric hospital. I don't know what that means, success. Uh, I, assisted, I, assisted in a healing for people. No, I didn't assist. I, I only took care of me. I'm responsible. I'm not. I wasn't interested in them. They, they were just. They just came along in my life and said, "Hello, you got stuff. You should let go." I said, "Oh, okay." So I'm. I didn't do it for them. They're just mirrors then to yourself. Um, more, in, more importantly, more specific, more precisely, that we had shared, shared memories. Ah, oh. yeah. Yeah. So um, this notion about healing people is bullshit stuff. I, I didn't do that. I'm only here to clean up what was going on in me that kept him goofy, that kept him stuck in the hospital. That's that's what I came. I came along to do that, to do it on me, not them. And if they benefit, okay. But I, that wasn't my that wasn't my orientation. That wasn't my focus. My focus was to be free. Yeah. yeah. So anyone who comes in front of you in any way or before or before yeah, you have relationship with that person you have, on some you have level. shared data and um, yeah. do you feel a sense of compassion towards the people that you <laughs> you're funny <laughs> what, what does that mean compassion uh, a heartfelt um, connection you want me to be deadly honest with you? Yes, please. It's, it's bullshit stuff. It's, it's like when you're free at zero, you have nothing. You're free. You're not even in love. You're not, you're not having any of this stuff you hear, the garbage. You're, you're nothing. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, listen, you know, seek ye first the kingdom, which is nothingness, and you shall see God. That's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in seeing the God in you guys. That, I'm not interested in. So if I see the God in you, then I'm okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm fine. Okay, that you're, you're, it's the data. If I can get, let go of the data, which is the mortgage on my soul, I get back to zero. Then I'm going to see what Jesus said. I'm going to see God. And nothing but. Yeah, nothing but. And because you guys were already perfect, it was the imperfection of the data in me, not in you. So this notion about saving or clearing out the Hospital is, is funny. The whole universe laughs. That, that universe is not interested in saving anybody. The universe is interested in one being 100% responsible. Then the universe will, will, will sing. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but did that event happen then? That was I'm sorry? The event that's described in, in the book about you working in the psychiatric hospital. What about it? Did it happen? What happened? Did it ha so happen that you did cleaning on uh, yourself and that those people were well, healed I, and, when and I, when, let, let, let me be really more precise. It's very important to be precise. When I showed up at the hospital, I, it isn't a job I wanted to do, right. but I had a friend there who said, we, we, we need some help. And I, I said, well, 
I can do it, just give me the names of the people. I can do it from wherever, I don't have to be there. Well, um, we can't do it because it's confidential. So I said, okay, and though maybe after a year or two, I finally relinquished and went. And so when I showed up, um, there all the, all the seclusion rooms were used. And there were people, um, several people, daily in uh, restraint, physical, uh, that sort of strength. Um, there, were, there was um, really verbal and physical violence on the war. So I just did my cleaning. What was going on in me that I'm experiencing? Like the toilets flushing with nobody on them, a shower turning on with nobody, you know. And so I just began the cleaning. And months later, um, without making an effort, the seclusion rooms went. Nobody ended up in the seclusion rooms. Um, the, the, the violence stopped. Um, whereas it would take several years to turn around time for people to go home, they were going home. Maybe after one, I, I was there about four years. Maybe the turnaround time was three or four months. And so it's essentially, that's what I did, just work on myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, whereas they didn't have any kind of um, uh, work program, we, we started doing things like uh, making cookies, started out, that was a wonderful project. Can you imagine, so supposedly, all these crazy people making cookies, yeah? but um, making cookies, polishing shoes, um, washing cars, things that they nobody ever thought of doing. And, and I didn't plan it, it just did it. it. I didn't go, well, let's see whether we can do something, make a new job. It didn't happen that way. So, um, so what? It, I'm sorry. And then, and then, and then the, no one could leave this unit without a position signature. But Maybe, I don't know, a year or two down the road, they were able, we, we were able to have a jogging program, tennis program. Yeah, but I didn't do anything. I just was clean on myself and just kind of watch and then be awed by what God can do. Huh? Oh, wow, I should do more cleaning, huh? Instead of being annoyed and irritable. <laughs> yeah, certain people would end up on the Certain staff would come on the ward and the ward would go crazy. I would notice that, so I would clean with that. As opposed to, I notice when Mrs. What's-Her-Name comes, everybody goes crazy. Oh, what's going on in me when Mrs. What's-Her-Name shows up? And the, the, so I worked on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And does, does this go to past lives or do you not have, deal with past I lives? I don't deal with that sort of I'm, I'm just deal with memories. What, what's going on in me that I'm experiencing this? Yeah. Now, there may be those things, that'll come up, uh, but I'm more interested in just targeting what's going on in me data-wise that I'm experiencing you. So if I'm experiencing you, however, 11 million of which I'm not even aware of that I'm experiencing you, and I'm, I'm willing to do the cleaning because I'm clueless. Absolutely clueless. Yeah. Have you, um, Dr. Hugh Len, had the experience of um setting your intention to do cleaning on a situation, say someone who was, uh, within yourself, someone came in front of you who was terminally ill, and you did some cleaning um, it within yourself, but the person still died. Have you had the experience? I, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. This notion about intention, again, is a, is a concept that's just database. There, nobody has intentions. This notion, uh, I mean, the people who make a lot of money don't intend to make a lot of money. They just do because the, there's some data in them that creates it. But, but to claim that, say how good I am, but you look at the financial situation. The people who are so supposedly good wrote all these books while well, we're finding out there. They were otherwise. So I don't, the, the notion of, uh, of intention is, is foreign to me. I don't know what that means. Okay, uh, maybe I'll use a different word then. It, but it, have you been in a cir circumstance? All the time. Where someone makes All the time. And so... All the time. I had a, I just came back from Japan. 
I had this woman come up to me, and 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 little lady, and beautiful lady. She said, "I I was I I had been diagnosed as, as having terminal cancer. I'm going to be dead in three months." And so I just did a cleaning. She came up. She looked at me. She hugged me. I, as I hugged her, I did the cleaning. But listen, I'm not God. Sure. But I mean, I'm not God. I'm not here to save anybody. That's the divinity's job, not mine. Mm -hmm. My job is to say, "I'm sorry. Please forgive me." Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not here to act as God to say, "Well, if I clean, I can save you." I don't do that. Can you tell us more specifically what you did within yourself? When that woman with cancer showed up, yeah. what did you clean within yourself? Yeah. So I said, I, as I was hugging her, I said to the divinity, thank you for giving me this opportunity for this lady to come up so that I can look at myself. What, what's going on in me that I, I, I would like to make amends for? And so I said to the divinity, I'm sorry for whatever's going on in me. And there are specific cleaning tools I use that are unique to me. But basically, I'm asking the divinity, I'm sorry, please forgive me for whatever's going on in me, that this woman should show up in my life, experiencing, my experiencing her saying to me, I, I've been diagnosed. Now, one of the things I had to work on, because um, um, I just had to work on this whole judgment about somebody saying that somebody's going to die in three months. Mm -hmm. I had to work on that one. Yeah. And, and again, um, people can't help if a doctor says she you only got three months to live he can't help it he, that's the data in him mm -hmm. so now the question is who's going to at some point who's going to start deleting the data but it's so easy yeah, can we delete all the data i'm sorry can we delete all the data that's, that's, jo that's a divinity's job not mine my so, job is to appeal divinity is job is to erase so i can't say the divinity like occasionally I say, come on, hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> did, did Buddha delete, delete, delete all the data as far as you can tell? You, you'll have to talk to Buddha. So do you, when you think of enlightened masters on the planet, you don't necessarily think of them with data deleted then, or do you? No, I'm more interested like in somebody else. I'm, I'm not interested whether Shakespeare is a, is a, uh, a, 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 a risen master. I'm more interested in some insights that I could, I could use to get some of these ideas across. For example, Shakespeare's, I think the notion that poor soul, how does that, you know, poor soul, um, these rebel powers that be are red. So Shakespeare's already said, hello, the, the the sin, the, or the error is in the soul. So I go, oh, yeah, I, that's, that's sure. It's not out there someplace. It's a rebel power, what Shakespeare called four bemoan, moan, grievances for gone. It's played before, it's going to play again. The tragedy is, we don't know that. That's the tragedy. We don't know that the data runs us. That's the tragedy. And so we're going to repeat it over and yes. over and over. Have you reached a point in your own evolution where you can see where the data runs you and where you are clear? Uh, sometimes, but rarely. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm, more, I'm more interested in keeping the cleaning going nonstop. I, I don't go to that route. I'm, 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 because I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely clear in my soul that the divinity has given me one more chance to do to make amends for whatever is going on in me. So I'm clear that my only purpose for existence is to free myself, so that I can be free and once more be in line with the, the light and be in the light and so. Yeah. Do you have? Um an experience at times. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Do you have an experience at times of feeling like like you're in the groove, like you're in perfect alignment, like there are there moments where... I, I never look for that, but there are times in which I experience like like absolute love for my friend here. I, I, that I can experience. Um, I have children, grandchildren, of which I do the cleaning because I want to 
make sure that I'm not attached to them in any way so that they can get the information directly from the, from the divinity, not from me. So I'm just cut, 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 cut all the time. And occasionally, I, when I get a call from my, my, my children, my two I have two daughters, 30 plus, um, I should feel love for them. Yeah. When you say cut, are you talking about cutting apricots? Yeah, cut, I'm talking about erasing memories in me that I experience them as quotes, judging them, how come they don't do this way, they don't do that, and all that. Yeah. And they're beautiful, my children are. Um, are beautiful, yeah. yeah. But my responsibility for them is to, is to set them free from any grasp that I have on them, which is memory, like trying to grab them. Would uh, that include f loving memories? A memory is a memory. So? It's a dead memory. There's no such thing as, as a, a good memory. So to set them free from memories would be not to remember any of the past that you've ever had together? Or to, to at some point, to see them as gods. Now you say, or. Yeah. Be, they're mutually exclusive. Oh, of course, because if I, if I have, if I have, and you know, I, I'm going to be cleaning with them to, to the day I die. It's just the way it is. I mean, they're there, I experience them, and I want to make sure I'm just cutting these ties so that they get the information directly from the divinity, not from me. Mm -hmm. So, am I sure? Um, I'm never sure. I, I don't know that well. I just keep cleaning and cleaning. Yeah. You, you speak, or maybe it's Joe that references the experience of wonder and the importance of the experience of wonder. Could you talk a little more about I, that? I'm more, experience, I'm more interested in the experience of freedom. More yeah. than wonder. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because that question brings up, there was a chap, they call himself chap, yes. in Australia. Who, who I was giving, I gave a lecture, and he kept saying, now, wait a minute, you mean you don't want us to be curious? That's his comeback. I said, well, to be, at, to be at zero, you can be in awe, but if you want to take curiosity instead of awe, be my guest. Yeah. It's hard to, to put things down um, only because um, I, I'm, I'm never certain if I'm inspired or not, and, yes. I'm, and to, be on, to be very honest, I don't care. I'm just doing the cleaning, just not stop. Yeah. So I don't have any intentions to, for example, um, people will call me. I used to do these things I don't do anymore. Um, like um, there's a young man in Hawaii who um, is having a very difficult tr um, coat his mother is saying he has very he's having a difficult time people don't like him he's not doing well at school and so as i'm reading the email i'm doing the cleaning what's going on in me this is this is showing up and then she asked um how to how to help him and i had to remind her you're not helping him it's only about you what's going on in you that you're experiencing that way and do you take individual clients i i used to maybe 20 years ago, but, but I don't no. do that anymore. Yeah. Better that they should learn how to do it on their own, huh? Put us out of business so yeah. we can be vacationing here in Monterey <laughs> instead of trading around the world. Yeah. I'm curious um, what in you is uh, creating your commitment to such a rigorous teaching schedule? Somebody asked me that, but they asked me in a different way. This is the way they asked me. They asked me, how did, you come, uh, how, did you, how did you come around to doing this? And I said, I don't know. Uh, life is a mystery, and I just happen to be here in this moment, and there are all the forces, and I have no idea how these forces brought me here. Uh, but I, I'm clear, I'm clear though, I'm here to clean with you, you chair the board. Uh, this guy, the camera, the, <laughs> that thing is going to get on the internet. 
when I get on, then I get on shows, and the shows are all generated by oil. You know that, right? Do you have a cell phone? Yes. You, you know what the source, the power of that cell phone is? Oil. Without the oil, that you, you, you guys wouldn't have any. Couldn't generate a cell phone message. Mm -hmm. All of that. So I'm cleaning with that. The rape of Mother Earth. I know. We're, we're raping Mother Earth. And, but we can't help it. So I'm, I have to remind myself, nobody can help it. Everybody's stuck in programs. And, so somebody's got to get to the cleaning, and I'm willing to do it. Uh, Marvin's willing to do it. More and more people around the world are willing to do it. And, uh, you have, um, I guess the answer I was looking to to that last question is, I, I had in mind the possibility that you had the hope that many people would be doing this work, and that we might change the uh, If nobody showed up, I would do it anyway. But would it not be your hope? Or maybe you don't hope. Uh, that, that there would be don't you think a movement? Don't you think it's a form of manipulation? I've thought that. Well, I'm, I can erase that then. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not, I, I can work on that. I, 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 I'm, I want to get to zero uh, so that, that the people who, who are divinely correct to come will come. Right. Uh, that's mine. I'm not... I'm not here to promote anything. I'm not, at least I'm not. I'm not intending to do it. I'm not conscious I'm doing it. I may be, but I, I, I think it's a, it's a disservice to people to promote something and then have them come when, when, for them divinely it's not correct to to be wherever they they end up being. You know. In other words, prom promotion speaks to their memories yeah. and stimulates their memories. Yeah. But can promotion also speak to them as and, and stir them to want to erase their if, memories? If, if, if I clean, let's say I clean in seven, there are eight billion people out there. If I clean and I get myself back to zero, even for an instant, everybody will get back to zero then it's the divine in them that will, will choose to, to do it or not to do it. Not, not some promotion on my part or some manipulation on my part. Yeah. And the book that Joe wrote about you or with you, yeah. is, is that a manipulation? Is that, how do you see the book? Yeah. Well, it depends on what page you're on. Uh. <laughs> Depends Overall, on what, how do you feel they're, 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 Well, but I cleaned before, so like with you, um, he had asked me months and months and months if I would do a book with him, and I, I, I did the cleaning, I heard no, 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 just like with you guys, mm -hmm. and at some point I heard yes, and so I did it. Now, I'm responsible for every point and every letter in the book, so... There are people who will ask me certain things, and uh, have, having not read all of the book myself, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but I, I, my, my own sense, um, he, he did. I, he, he's a nice guy, mm -hmm. and and so I, he shows up for me to clean, and I clean, and I heard do it. And so sometimes somebody will ask me, like you asked me, well, what does Joe Vitale think about it? I said, you'll have to talk to Buddha or Duretta. I, I can't speak for them. If we have a subconscious, yeah. then that's where memories are stored. And yeah. some people say it's the physical body that is the subconscious. Yeah. What about a chair? What about um, what we would na maybe call an inanimate object that does not have a subconscious? Yeah. Where does it store its memory? It does have a. This, this thing is alive. This thing is telling me who sat here. All the people who sat here. This thing is telling me where the where the material came from. It's, it t it's talking to me, and as it's talking, I'm just doing the cleaning. Um, so this chair, like you, has the three cells. It has the has a super conscious, conscious, and subconscious. So it isn't, there's no such thing as an inanimate object. And for example, you can talk to the camera. 
you can say to the camera, how many cameras do you have, um, Alex? So you can say to the camera, well, we're gonna, we're gonna tape this guy, um, Hugh Lynn, so can you, well, what do you think about that? You can talk to the cameras and the cameras will tell you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 I don't know about that. And then, then let's say he knew how to do the cleaning. And I said, well, let's, let's do the cleaning. And so he does the cleaning and maybe the camera will change his mind. So when photographers say the camera loves you, they're speaking uh, more than uh, they know. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Even I had a, to show you how, how goofy this thing can be, I had a, a friend of mine who married a guy who wasn't doing very well in the, in the, in the construction business. And then when like 40,000 he made, and then maybe three years later after she married him, he, he made three million. But she, she knew that her job was to to work on all of the projects, talk to all of the projects. And so one day he was having trouble, I think putting up a scaffold or something. And so she did the cleaning and she heard the nails. She heard the nails and said, we, we just can't get along. <laughs> can't get along. So if you can't get nails to even get along, then you can't put up a scaffold, you know. Then the scaffold won't work. So the idea is you have to be able to talk to everything. Get them ready, like little children. You have to say, okay, here we're starting a new project. Here's the address. Here, and then you you begin the pro, you begin the cleaning right away, and then the right subcontractors will show up. I mean, and the, the right banking will show up. The right whatever. But it, everything is alive. Yeah. Okay. So everything has the three selves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've seen the kind of. Um process happen that you're describing where everything just drops into alignment with the plan but um, uh, how is it uh, would you encourage everyone to learn to have the facility that you have of talking to furniture and talking to a plan and talking to all the forces well, that go into making well, something work? I, I, whoever shows up over the weekend and at this lecture I'm going to is that what Talk you're about that. About? Yeah, but I'm not going to get yell at the rest of the world. Said, "Come on, come on! I have something I'm going to tell you about that you, you could really use." That, that's um, that's an imposition. Yeah, um, yeah, it's an imposition. It's not a gift. It's an imposition. Yeah. My job is to is to do my cleaning, and and then if I'm if I do my cleaning, get back to zero, everybody will get back to zero. I'm, that's my that's the only purpose I'm here. And then people show up because they would like to, however they've heard it, and they would like to know more. I'm willing to do that because I can get more people to clean, then I, I'm going to have more enlightenment, huh? Great. Right. <laughs> as, as opposed to my, my light bulb went, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> my children said, Dad, your light's out. <laughs> so thank you. Are there certain activities that you engage in in life that help you to get to zero more than others? Yeah, like eating, the, eating cleaning foods, drinking liquids that are cleaning, um, plants, having plants in your, in your environment that clean, of course. When you are doing uh, cleaning, are you going into an altered state of consciousness? No. You're just uh, doing it from your conscious mind and trusting that. Well, I'm, I'm hoping I'm, I'm doing it consciously, but I'm hoping I've talked to my subconscious, who is a computer bank, that that the subconscious has been has heard me enough. I've fallen in love with it, and have said has asked it, please help me with the cleaning. And so I, I downloaded every information that I know about the cleaning, and so my subconscious knows it, and it will do the cleaning. Mm. So. Are there any guides or angels that help one with cleaning? If you eat blueberries, for example, blueberries erase memories and open up angelic kingdoms. Ah. Yeah. Could you speak to us a little about angelic kingdoms? Um, what would you like to know? <laughs> um, are there levels to them? Do they interact with humans? I don't know those things. I, I, don't, I don't go that route. 
All I know is one day I was cleaning years ago, and um, the man he said, "Why don't you try blueberries?" I said, okay. <laughs> And I said, well, what do you see? I said, well, I could see the evangelic kingdom. And, and then that was it. The discussion ended. I didn't hear whether they were levels or they were stretched out. I didn't hear anything. Do you mean like nature spirits when you speak of angels? I don't or? know what that is. Like they, people say that there are little people that are guardians of plants and the, and the earth? No, I'm talking about angelic kingdom. Other, other universes, other dimensions that open up, stretch open. So you, eat, you eat one blueberry, just just stretches, and your mind goes, wow. Yeah, and you may not be conscious of it. That's the 11 million for which you're not conscious. Right. And it's different with blackberries than blueberries. Well, I don't know about blackberries. I know blueberries. I know strawberries. Those things. Strawberries, for example, deal with women's hatred for men. Lots there, you know. That's right. I, I remember. Really <laughs> I forgot all about that. Why don't you tell us a little bit about women's hatred for men? Well, well I, I'm going to go back to a story, and the story is probably um, they have similar stories across culture. So anyway, um, this is a Los Angeles story. So Divinity said hello. Heaven on earth, now you, you get you you get you get this experience. You go, Adam goes, yeah. Eve goes, yeah. Wow, incredible. And so, divinity then says, now you see that tree over there? That's the tree of knowledge. I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat that stuff. You see that apple? I wouldn't eat it because you don't need it. You're already perfect. Well, maybe. Zillions of lifetime, he says to Adam, come on, we got to eat that because I think he's keeping a secret from us. And then along comes the so-called serpent part of the, yeah, yeah. So finally, they eat it. And then Jesus, or not, sorry, I take that back. God comes along and he, in his long robe and you can hear him swishing. And then he says, he goes, there's a difference in vibration in this, this. And Adam says what? What does Adam say? Adam says, she made me do it. She made me do it. And that's the story of women abused, neglected. But Scapegoated. She, but she made me do it. And so... Women end up, for example, with menopause, rage, that's, a, that's rage. That's the kind of stuff that, that can be prevented, but that's, the, that's rage. And menopause is rage? Yep. So I just throw that in, yeah, for good measure. <laughs> rage. Prevented well, by cleaning? Oh yeah, it could, it could be worked on, but it, but you know, it's better to work on it before than wait till towards the end, all of a sudden it's like, you mean the cessation of menses is rage, or the ex the the symptom? <laughs> it? It's rage. This, this You're talking about hot flashes and stuff yeah, like that. It's rage. The yes, the yeah, it's rage. Yes. Yeah, rage. It's 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 it isn't quote natural. It's not a natural state. I can't imagine God would create somebody and say, create you and say, I'm going to make you suffer. I can't imagine that. So where did it come from? Well, it came from, she made me do it. So we have a lot of, uh, oh, 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 no, oh, no. <laughs> You got more than a lot. <laughs> yeah. So that's women's rage towards men. What about men's rage towards women? Well, but, but, but see, see, now you're going, you're, you're moving in a way the question I would ask if I were a woman, what's going on in me that I can clean this thing up? As opposed to looking outside and say, why, why did you do that to me? And you should get your act together. Yeah, actually, the uh, sorry, Rick, That's one it. of the questions that crosses my mind is, why is it that we have that degree of rage towards each other, yeah, fellow human beings? But you're speaking data. You can, you're engaged. You're, you're, you're wrapping yourself as opposed to you can let it go. I love you, thank you, whatever you can, I love you. But we, we have an addiction. The addiction is so, 
so intense, we grab things. How come? Have you ever read Chekhov, the, the Russian um, short tort? He, that's, that's the theme in all of his stories. How come? Why? Why did they cut down that forest? Why are they doing that? Why, why is it that we can't get along? Why is it that we, we suffer when if we, if we were friends, everybody would profit from this? Well, the why is it old data playing and we're stuck in it. And if you grab it like the Greeks do, we're going we're gonna to analyze it. Like I was trained when I got a PhD at the University of Iowa. You're going to grab it and try to make sense of it. You, you, you can't. 11 million for which you are clueless. And so the idea is Jesus, Moses, all these, all these great sages come along to hello. Let go. <laughs> so have you set aside your analytical processes? No, no. You see, I'm still here. What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm still here. If I, if I had let that all go, I wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here either. If you were going to ask you a really rich question. What question would you ask yourself? Who am I? And how would you answer it? I'm an, I am infinitely zero. I'm, I, I'm, I'm an exact copy of, of the source. The infinite. I'm an exact copy. That means I'm perfect in every way. My problem is not me. My problem is the data in me. Are, are you an individuated perfection? What does that mean? Are we all, are we, do we have any individuated aspects? One more time. Did God create us individually? Yeah, of course. You're, so God created you and your, diff, your rhythm is very different from ours. Your yes. rhythm is different from the chair. Yeah. Of course. And so even at zero limits, I still have a rhythm that is unique. Absolutely. To this. And you have a rhythm for which then you have a certain purpose for which only you can fulfill. And if you don't fulfill it, then we're all stuck. Yeah. But each of us, like Marvin and me, this chair, we've come, we, we have been given the gift of this lifetime to take ourselves back, what Shakespeare says, to thine own self be true. And who are we? We are like an exact likeness of the divine, which is we're zero infinite. That's what we're nothing. My mother used to say that to me when I used to go surfing and come home late. You're nothing, you're nothing. But now I realize I'm nothing. <laughs> she was right all along. <laughs> that was a good thing, right? And Always listen to your mother. mother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, she was vociferous about that. You're nothing. And, and, and finally, what, I'm 70 and I'm fine. Wow. My mother had that insight and it took me 70 years to get it. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Is this, um, I know that this is a revised version of Ho Ho'oponopono that you work with, and I'm wondering whether or not um, the method that existed, and, and I have a, a small familiarity with the previous version of Ho'oponopono. Tell me what the previous version is. My understanding of it is uh, that uh, a group of people would get together if there were misunderstandings among them, and there would be uh, a person standing in as a facilitator, and it would depend upon more, that More person. like a guard. Oh, okay. <laughs> the guard would ensure it, that, it, that a smooth <laughs> process unfolded so that people would come yeah. to some kind of understanding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, in in some workshops that I've taken that have been about Huna and uh, there's no such thing as Huna. Oh, there isn't. No, that that's uh, made up by some white lady person. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, well, I was wondering if if, if uh, in the previous version, the earlier version of Ho'oponopono, before. Um, Hawaii was infiltrated by foreigners. Um, visited by visited by <laughs> foreigners. Yeah. Um, if if you think that perhaps things were different, uh, then uh, well, if a society evolved that was perhaps more enlightened. Listen, if you you look at you look at across the culture, across all the cultures that we have in this this great village called mankind. Um, you will find only two models, and one model is very rare, 
And that model is, the model is, you got to go talk to a, a guru to get to talk to the divinity, right? Right. Uh, this one, you can talk directly. You don't need a guru, you don't need a coach, <laughs> you don't need a master, you don't need any of those. That, you don't even need, if I'm angry with him, I don't need him because the anger is in me. Right. So why would I talk? So, the thing I liked about this when I heard about it um, 20 something years ago, I was like, wow, it's just my own stuff and I can go directly to many who can erase it, you know? Yeah. Mm. So the whole point of the, that we teach, you're on your own, but you, you got a good coach called God. Yeah. You can talk directly and only that in only that force in you can erase. There's no guru, there's no master, there's no pope, there's nobody can erase. Only the divinity in you can do that. So I'm going to talk to the, why should I go to an in-between? A wholesaler. <laughs> 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 you have a whole team of people, do you not, to do uh, um, the whole Pono Pono work with you? Um, you know, I'm, I'm part of a group of people who who we have developed over over the last 25 or 26 years. Um, some of them are coordinators, like my friend uh, Marvin here, who, who does most of the work. Um, he has to listen to all these telephone calls, get these emails, and I'm glad I don't have to. That's not my part. I wasn't created for that thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But so, so, and then we have also coordinators uh, who can teach, who, who, so coordinate teach, and then we have people who teach who don't coordinate. And then we have um, key people who are key people because of the cleaning that they have been assigned to do, not because of anything else, but they, they are important people in terms of cleaning. If we can get them involved in the cleaning, we will have an easier job. Yeah, so we have one, two, three, four of them. Mm. Yeah. So but these people are particularly skilled at cleaning? Not that they're skilled. They're the worst people on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> really? The meaning says, okay, let's get the worst people on the planet to do the cleaning. Wow, I think that's wonderful, don't you think so? So we we, we have the the biggest troublemakers on in the in on the in the cosmos helping with the cleaning. Yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. So why, you know, if any said, why would I, Jesus came and said, why would I fall in love, be in love with somebody that already loves me? I'm going to go look for somebody who hates me. So we got a lot of people who are kind of of that category who can, who can clean because that's what they're trying to do. Wow. Yeah. That's inspiring. You suppose you got that? No. <laughs> I Can you share that with us? Did you get it? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Share that with I don't you. understand. That there are people who so want to clean up themselves and they have so much work to do that their cleaning really transforms the planet yeah. because how much they have to clean. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And without their cleaning, we would have, we, it would take a longer They longer are big time. vacuum cleaners. Yeah. Mangungus, <laughs> and they only showed up over the last thirty years. <laughs> but Marvin is not one of those. He's one of those finite. He has that. I can, that, I that. can see that. <laughs> he has one of those French. Um, he swivels. Really <laughs> yeah, he swivels. Yeah, but he's very good at the swiveling. Yes, that's, that's why he showed up. Mm -hmm. So Marvin, you, we haven't let you get a word in edgewise here. Would you like to share a little bit about your experience in doing Ho'oponopono? Well, um, I don't know where to start, but um, it's something that I'm just very thankful for the divinity to, to give me as a tool to get back to where I'm supposed to be, to be with God. I, it, you know, it, I just, I'm just in awe to have this kind of tool to, to be able or to be able to go back to him, basically. It's, it just transforms my life, you know. So, yes. used to be, I would, for anything that happens, I would look at 
other people other than myself to point a finger to and say, you know, you did it instead of looking at me. Right. So you just change just change the whole thing. So it's just cleaning. It's just, just about cleaning. So that's all that you'll say. And why is there cleaning to do? Tons of them. You know, no matter what you do, there's always tons. You know, always you have people who who are signing up or want to know this or that, and, and you know, I'm glad Marvin got that area covered. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to just show up and do the work. Well, but I get to do my part, which is not easy. <laughs> yeah. Because what, what you're dealing with is, is the addiction for engagement. The addiction for engagement, yeah. did you say? Yes. Yeah. Like you, want to, you want to wrap your hands yeah. around it. Yeah. You want to get a hold of it. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and the, the realization is people cannot help it. Right. So somebody's got to get to the cleaning. And so... The idea is that my responsibility, his responsibility. So one of the things that we say to, our, to the staff in the class, hello, do your cleaning, don't be asking any questions, that's, a, that's engagement. But if they're willing to do the cleaning, the, the class usually goes fairly smoothly. Hmm. So, you know, because they can catch areas for which I'm not even conscious of, you know. They can pick it up in there. And how many people we have this weekend, staff? Uh, we have four yeah including me five yeah and then well, my, my kids uh, are volunteers yeah but it's the cleaning that's going to get us through this weekend because if we're doing our cleaning and they will get the information directly from the source as opposed to getting it from us yeah. Latsu once said that to become knowledgeable is to acquire information constantly but to become wise is to un to let go yeah. of information constantly yeah. that would yeah. be similar to yeah. Yeah. So, but the, more importantly, if if you're at zero, you allow everybody else to be at zero, and they get their own information, mm -hmm. as opposed to your thinking you're going to deliver the information. If you if you're coming from, I got the information, I'm going to deliver it to you. You're going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. You're you're. It's going to be a long weekend. <laughs> but if I'm willing to clean along with the five other people, they will get the room will get what it needs, the chairs will get what it needs. I mean, really, so profound. The floor, the building, like the Sheraton will get it, the land will get it, um, San Jose will get it. This will go out and um, mm -hmm. light up the whole world. Yes. It's yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tough to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was a point in, in Zero Limits where you mentioned, where it is mentioned. Oh, I like that, that. <laughs> yes. Uh, that, um, that uh, when you were doing cleaning, sometimes you would feel pain in your body. Yeah. And uh, I've been working with, uh, I love you, I'm sorry, please yeah. forgive me, thank you for, yeah. uh, with a fair bit of dedication, yeah. not as much as you probably, but yeah. for about eight months now. Yeah. And I noticed times where I would feel, it felt like I would describe it as an energy knot that would yeah. congeal and harden and intensify in my body. Yeah. And as I kept on doing cleaning, yeah. that it would sort of dissipate. Is this a common pattern that you... Um, I think it's different for everybody. Uh, yeah. But that's the thing I love about the Ho'oponopono, is that there's no, there's no one program for everybody. Everybody is their own program. And so the program is to, to really erase the data, to get everybody back to zero. That's, and once they get back to zero, they, they'll be off by who they are. They'll fall in love with themselves. They'll be they'll be grateful, but like the word aloha for the Hawaiians, some Hawaiians, I should be careful. Some Hawaiians, when you say aloha, you're actually saying alo means to be in the presence and ha means God. So I, when I when people say aloha, I, you're actually saying I'm in the presence of God. So the whole point of is to be in the presence of God, and you have to recognize that everything is really God made. And if you mess around with them, it's going to come back and swat you. Yeah. Best to say, ah. <laughs> yeah. Do you, um, 
uh, meditate, Dr. Hulin? Um, I meditate with my eyes open. Yeah. <laughs> um, there are times when I, I do meditate, yeah. and there are times when uh, you sort of get into uh, a spaciousness sort of state of being, where it feels um, very peaceful and open and connected. And I'm just curious if that is a state of being that would be similar to what you're describing. Maybe unique to you. Um, maybe unique to other people. Other people will get it differently. We, we, we will be teaching a meditation process in uh, this weekend's class. But that meditation is about cleaning. So let's say we, we take it through and you sit there and people, there was one lady in Australia would say, but what do you focus on? I said, you don't focus on anything. But you got to focus on something. I said, well, be my guess. <laughs> but basically, you go and you do the meditation, so that whatever comes up will get cleaned up. As long as you're in that meditation, you you can bring it to an end. But as long as you're in that meditation, it's a cleaning process. You're sitting there and all kinds of stuff will come up. It's going to get cleaned up. As opposed to sitting there and going, oh my God, do I have to put up with that thought form? And But not to open upon it. Open upon it. Everything is about cleaning including the meditation. That's why I love I love doing it. I, I do it zillions of times a day, just for that. Yeah. Yeah. But I only do it for cleaning. I want I really want to get back to my original state, which is purity of heart. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the most important question is who am I? If you don't if you if you have no idea about that, you'll always suffer. You, you can't get home. You can't get home. Well, and, I mean, that's the most important question in creation. Who am I? You know? So the whole point of is about saying, hello, this is who you are. You're perfect already. The garbage that you're experiencing is not you. Just data. They go, huh? <laughs> and, and then they go, wow, thank God. <laughs> How about guilt, Dr. Hewlett? Data. You know, what about... I was I, I was doing a class with Joe Vitale and something phenomenal happened. Something that I, I was moved by. So towards the end, a, a, a man in the back of the room says, how, how do you, I think, I'm not quite if I'm doing it correctly, uh, accurately, how do, you, how do you clean with my, if I have the experience of having uh, molested, sexually molested my grand, uh, granddaughter? I went, wow, there it is. That's the truth, like nobody's business. So I, I had a chance to clean with that. And he did it kind of like he, up it came. And I thought it was beautiful. Yeah. What are some of the most wonderful experiences that you've had over these 30 years? Probably realizing more and more that this lifetime is really a gift. Um, and it's a gift for cleaning. It's a gift of going home. Um, it's taken me years to kind of realize that, that this, that this lifetime is truly a gift um, from the divine. And it's a gift of, to make amends. And I'm, I'm willing to do it. Yeah. I've met some, some interesting people over the years, but I, I would say that probably for me is realizing that this lifetime is, is really a gift. And a, another gift is the cleaning process. Another gift is, is um, identity. And then realizing that uh, we are carbon copies of uh, this pure, perfect source. Yeah. Yeah. Do, yes. you, do you have, have experience of um, moments or blocks of time where you feel yourself as source? As what? As, as uh, divinity. It, that being in, this, in, in a state of consciousness, perhaps where you would be merged with your high oh. self, your conscious mind and your high self would uh, open up a window of <laughs> perception. 
I, I have moments of feeling um, love for myself. I have moments of feeling love for my children. I mean, the kind of love where you have no attachments. That you, you are, I have this experience of experiencing God's love for my children. I've had that experience. I've experienced, I've had the kind of experience of God's love for me. Is it possible that God is the only thing that loves? Oh, that, that absolutely so. So God is love. Everything else is um, a mimic. I've heard it said that love is looking with the eyes of God and yeah. seeing God. Yeah, well, that's what Jesus said. Seek ye first of God. Blessed are the pure in heart. Zero, therefore they shall see God, but the God in them is seeing God. Yes. And yeah, I've had those experiences. They've come and gone. Mostly I feel like caught up in data and so which I need to think. When you, when you travel the world, there's, there, you're, you're always apt to have a lot of garbage come up. Yeah. Like one of the garbage I deal with, and I work, I, I clean with it before I show up, and I've been cleaning with it for, for, um, for almost three decades, is this notion that you can, you can come to a, a, an appreciation of God by grasping, by, by through the grasping process, the engagement process. It can't be done. It can't be done. It's a surrender. Yeah, not not that. For me, it's a letting go. It's a it's taking 100 percent responsibility to just let go. And it's not easy to let go because the letting go. Of the the, for example, some people will say, "Well, I'm clean, but I don't get any result." Well, and they're talking to me. I'm cleaning. What would what would we be cleaning with? Intention, so I'm cleaning with intention. He, the person is cleaning with a certain intention. Okay, I'm cleaning with when he, when people tell me that I'm cleaning with God is not a concierge. You don't say to God, I'm going to clean and I want this color, this, but I want it to look like this. And yeah, yeah, there you go. You look young. So I'm, I get to work on that because I didn't realize I had it. And so people will show up in my life if I don't get really stuck in what the hell are they? talking about as opposed to oh what's going on in me that 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 coming up that I can work on that's a tough one yeah. does anyone help you clean what does that mean do, do you have someone that uh, that oh that that either sets uh, an environment space, right? space. Uh, I think what what there's there's someone Actually, there are two or three people that I work with um, that we we do cleaning when things come up. You know, if there are things that, for example, if, if a request comes from, like, I got a request from Singapore. And Singapore, uh, there's a banker there that wants us to come. And so um, I do the cleaning, and then I give that information to two or three people, and they can do it. And so we, we can we can get the information because we're the baddest guys on the earth. I mean, <laughs> clean up and then to see whether it's correct to do. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Not at all. Not at all. I, I enjoyed it. I'm I'm grateful. Got a chance to clean up. Huh? Well, good. I've heard the questions before. Uh, I'm <laughs> sure you have. Mm. Yeah.